Hey everybody, it's me, I'm back after a long summer off of uh, not shooting many videos because frankly I was uh, really, really busy. I tried to take a vacation this summer in August, which I did. I tried to give my staff, uh, you know, three weeks of vacation this summer, which I did. And on top of that, this was the biggest, busiest uh, cycle of um, October 1 applications I've ever had and it just kept me busy. Um, I'm really thankful for that, right? That's all good. Uh, what I wanna tell you is just give you an update. I wanna give you an update on the H2B cycle, what happened in October 1 cycle, what we learned, and what's probably going to happen in this coming April cycle. So uh, if you are thinking about the H2B program, this is a good video for you to watch, get caught up, sit back, relax, and I'll see you after the break. What's up guys? It's me, it's Damien. I'm wearing a hoodie. This is this is Frontier Tech Law. I do have my professional look under here though. Check it out. It's a, it's a shirt also with Frontier Tech Law and I have a hat. This is the new look for the channel. I kind of want to get consistency going. It's really hard. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, that uh, evil genius, uh, taught us this. Steve Jobs taught us this, that evil genius also. I'm emulating the evil geniuses. I guess this is what I'm saying. And I'm gonna be wearing the same thing for my videos. I've got all this gear. You know, I do H2B visas. This is a blue collar visa. So I feel like a hoodie's appropriate. And I've been told, I've been told that this shirt here makes me look like a cheap car salesman. I've been told that by uh, friends who are in a comedy club that's actually below my offices here in New Haven. And I think that's great. I think I think that is what I do, that is, that is appropriate. So uh, I feel good in that. I don't know why I'm, I feel good about being analogous to evil geniuses and looking like a used car salesman. It feels it feels like it fits, you know, I don't have much ego, I don't think. And so uh, I'm like, I, I can go with that. You know, I can go with that. Anyway, uh, this is Law Great. My name is Damien DeNoble. I'm an attorney at Frontier Tech Law. Yes, an attorney wearing a hoodie. Yeah, pretty cool. And uh, I want to give you an update on what the October 1 cycle was like, what we can ex expect in terms of additional uh, workers being allotted and then what we can expect in the April 1 cycle. A lot of my information comes from, yes, my work. I do a lot of these applications every year, but I'm also part of the Seasonal Employer Alliance, which is here. And uh, if you're an employer, it is the best money you can probably spend if you're an H2B program to go ahead and join SCA. If you work with me, you're already technically kind of paying for the SCA because every time I file an application, a part of that money goes to the SCA, you know, so you get the benefit of my wisdom and their, their wisdom all in one. But anyway, they're awesome. Seasonal Employer Alliance. It was a really busy cycle this October 1st cycle. So I started filing prevailing wages in May. Some people came on board, uh, you know, didn't file them until June. And even some of my uh, May, early May prevailing wages didn't come in until, you know, at the start of filing season in July. So the first thing I learned this year is that prevailing wages, uh, when it comes to an overtaxed Department of Labor, could take, you know, eight weeks in some cases. So we want to get those filed early. Last year, I said my cutoff for filing any applications was November 15th. This year, I'm saying it's November 10th. I'm going to back it up by five days. But really, I'd like to file all my prevailing wages by November 1st. So if you're watching this video, it's probably dropping on October 4th. Uh, you should get that going, get that going. Call me if you need help. I have decided that my focus uh, with this firm is really just gonna be H2Bs and family petitions. We might change our name to Frontera Labor. And that's simply because the demand for these things is really, really high. And I feel like we do them well here. Um, the number of applicants for the October cycle exceeded the number of visas. Remember there's 33,000 visas twice a year. Exceeded the number of visas in record time this year. September 12th was the last day that USCIS could accept an application and uh, guarantee a number. Um, that is that is almost a full three weeks uh, before the last day last year, which is almost a full seven weeks of the last day two years ago. And so we see that even the October cycle is slowly but surely becoming a lottery cycle like April. A September 12th cutoff date for USCIS means that the last day realistically that your 
Department of Labor application could have been in was somewhere around the third week of July, which I predicted correctly. So around July 21st, I would say, um, all of those applications we had after July 21st had timing issues. Um, so even October now is becoming really time sensitive. The other thing that I noticed in this October cycle is we, we, we still have lots of new Department of Labor officers. We have a lot of overworked officers. So it was fairly common to see applications get stuck when they were responding to notices of deficiency or get stuck when recruitment reports were being put in. And it became really important to follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Um, and that's going to continue to be a theme, I think, uh, just like every other agency, perhaps ironically, the Department of Labor is having trouble hiring, just like employers do. And they, when they do hire, they're hiring kind of green officers who need a lot of help. So one of the things in the applications is tracking them. Another thing is, you know, showing ample proof. Sometimes it means showing that the type of application you've put in before has been prior approved. I think it's going to continue to be an uphill for first time applicants um, who have to show a new Department of Labor officer that even their pretty rote application, because it's a first time thing, is approvable. And so first time applicants are gonna need to show you know, have a really good package um, going into this thing. I've been consulting a lot with other firms and I gotta tell you, the biggest mistake I continue to see year to year is that people put in as one of their reasons that they want temporary need certification is that they can't find employees, right? Or that COVID makes it impossible to find employees or that the job shortage is leading to an impossibility of finding employees. A job shortage, COVID, the inability to find employees are simply reasons for the Department of Labor to, re to reject your application. Stop saying that in your application. Stop even hinting at it. It doesn't help, it only hurts. And I continue to see that um, in, in these cycles. The next thing that's become apparent is that consulates are just slow, 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 slow. And so in this cycle, I'm gonna put in a new kind of method for going through consulates. I think people who use recruiters are doing really well. People who are looking to file uh, console applications themselves or, or even with my help are, are you know, really, really struggling. So I would say that um, consulates are kind of the biggest time suck barrier and that's gonna continue to be true going forward. Overall, we had over 70,000 Department of Labor applications. You know, that's a lot, you know, close to 80,000, I think um, already by August. And most of those are not gonna make it, right? Cause there's 33,000 visas available. To give you an overview, like five years ago, I think we were under subscribed, right? There were fewer applications than visa slots available in the October cycle. Um, so this just again points to a worsening crisis um, of uh, finding employees in the United States. And it points to a lot of desperate businesses. It points to a lot of businesses who weren't in the program before entering it. This is a continuing theme if you've watched my videos over the years. What can we then expect in April? My prediction this year is that we're gonna see the numbers go up, up, up again. Um, still 33,000 visas. We're gonna have 170,000 applicants. Uh, we're gonna have some of that is gonna attempt to be kind of uh, allayed. Some of that it's, we're gonna attempt to soften that shock um, here in the US with an additional release of workers for the second time ever for the previous October cycle. Last year we had 23,500 spots. I expect uh, maybe 30,000 for this October cycle to be released if we're lucky. Word on the hill is that we will hear a release uh, announcement around November with the release itself actually happening in December. So if you have an October approval, that's something to look forward to in lieu of just entering the April cycle. Okay, still, I think the April cycle is still gonna see quite a bit more applicants than last year. I'm guessing 170,000 workers are gonna be requested in the first three days. 33,000 are gonna be approved. So that means we're probably gonna see, it's 20,000 per group in the lottery. So we're gonna see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, maybe even an I group this year. A group, if you do everything well and you're actually a good fit for the program, you're pretty much guaranteed to get workers. B group, you know, 60% of you probably get workers, okay? And everybody else, is gonna be working towards a certification with an additional allotment chance uh, that's going to happen in next May or June when we could see 35, 40, even 45,000 additional workers released because we, again, we are in a crisis uh, for finding employees for jobs. Now, big picture, macroeconomic things. Um, everybody's seen that interest rates are going up. Uh, this is going to lead to a credit crunch. It's going to 
continue to deepen um, the recession that we're in officially or unofficially. Europe's in a recession, China's in some sort of uh, crisis. Uh, so we could see, you know, in 2023, we could see layoffs. If we do see layoffs and the unemployment rate goes up, then maybe the H2B program is going to loosen up a bit and there's going to be fewer employers because there's going to be more employees available or employers themselves are simply not going to have as much business. So we could very well see this be kind of peak H2B year and then it could level off a bit. On the other hand, we don't know how deep the employment crisis in the U.S. goes. We don't know how many people are actually going to need to work. We don't know if there are any people who are able to work in a lot of jobs remaining in the US, right? And uh, our immigration numbers are at one fifth of what they were five years ago. Our birth rates uh, overall continue to kind of slowly slide down. A lot of people have retired from the workforce. People who were in these sort of um, H2B jobs have either moved up into, into higher paying jobs uh, and there's been no one to replace them. Uh, my personal feeling is even if we do have an economic downturn, which leads to higher unemployment numbers, that's gonna be well balanced out by the fact that we still have fewer people uh, than we need to fill out um, many of the jobs that typically apply for this program, okay? So th that's kind of the general theme. Another theme with the H2B program, it's no, no longer just for landscapers and construction companies and uh, pool companies and, and fish manufacturers. It's now also something that's impacting the service center. There's a huge childcare crisis. There's a huge caregiver crisis. I have successfully, successfully been able to get childcare and workers and caregivers for the elderly, for the sick, for the disabled into the country on this program. There's a special way to do that and I'm going to be releasing starting Wednesday. So this releases on a Tuesday, October 4th. Wednesday, October 5th, we release the first of the Nanny videos, which is a multi-part series. I don't know if it's gonna be six or seven parts at this point. That's gonna detail how to do the nannies. And after that, I'm gonna release a caregiver series and that's gonna be on top of videos where I'm providing you kind of regular updates on um, what's, what's happening and what's going on. So you should definitely subscribe and follow along. Uh, last season for April, I was doing videos pretty regularly, giving people updates. I'm gonna be doing that again. So uh, yeah, if, if you're interested in the H2B program, this is the place to be. Um, final thoughts, you should be thinking about entering it now if you're gonna enter. Again, the last day really that you're gonna wanna apply is probably in the first week of November. You need to get your prevailing wage in. That means you need to have a contact phone number, a contact email, you need to know what workers you're gonna hire, you need to know the job descriptions, you need to know kind of what uh, company entity you're gonna be filing with. It'd be good to kind of think through your multiple options that you might have. And uh, all of that needs to happen, you know, relatively quickly. So I am probably gonna shut off taking clients uh, definitely in the first week of November because I just don't I'm not confident that we can get prevailing wages back in time for a January 1st filing date if I file anything after that so if you're interested let me know the other thing that might be happening is you might be having notices of deficiency you might have really complicated cases if you're attorneys or other agents I'm happy to consult on those and work on those um, I found a lot of success doing that and that's really it. So good to have everybody back. It's good to be back here on YouTube for this new H2B season. And I look forward to talking to you all throughout the season, giving you updates and uh, ask me any questions in the comments. As per usual, you can set up free consults with me on the H2B using the links that are at the bottom here, or you can do it directly to my site to the Hire Us tab and uh, be on the lookout for new eBooks. I know we're gonna be putting out one for nannies. We're gonna be putting out one for caregivers and I'll be updating the 2021, 2022 one soon. All those links will be in the description. All right, guys, thanks so much. Talk to you all soon and uh, good luck this H2B season.